Marhaba, Vanakam, and Zadravo. Hey, it's time from Green Shorts, and I've missed you guys. It's been a couple weeks since I posted a video, and today I'm gonna make a stackable aircrete rocket stove. I had a really nice message from Kit Ben, a frequent commenter here on the channel, and he was just asking what I was up to and if I was okay. <laughs> I really appreciate the fact that uh, you reached out, Kit, and um, certainly you haven't been missing videos, I just haven't had time to post them in the past three weeks. But that ends today. This video is also significant because it's Frankenfoam's last test. Once I've used this one more time, I think I'm pretty confident that it's going to do what I want it to in terms of generating a nice thick foam for making the aircrete. And if that video is already done at this point, I'll put a link above to the plans as well as a link in the description below if you're interested in getting the plans to Franken foam. I'm going to reuse the form boards that I made for the aircrete brick rocket stove build. But the riser is going to be round, and to make the forms for that, I'm gonna use this salvaged sewer pipe. That will of course be the outside diameter. And for the inside diameter, I'm gonna use this three inch PVC. The reason I'm gonna make this stackable and dry stackable for that matter is so that I can test different materials and replace the sections that wear out or break down. So my forms are gonna to need to look like this. I'll have a flat base I'll have two risers with a firebox opening, and then a firebox cap piece, and then a stack of multiple circles with a riser hole in the middle. Actually, I will put together a set of plans for these. If you prefer to work with plans, of course you'll need to scale this to fit the type of pipe you have for that outer diameter and inner diameter. Here's the elevation of how my parts are going to stack together. The base will be an inch and a half, the two riser sections will be three inches, and then the cap will be another inch and a half, and then my round rings will be two inches tall, and I'll probably need three or four of those. Hey, train's here. I'm gonna cut some rings out of the pipe of my three sizes. One and a half inches, two inches, and three inches. This can be done with a handsaw, but a skill saw would work great too. I moved into the garage for this because it's going to be easier for me to sweep up the PVC off the floor versus digging it out of the slate chips. My Ryobi actually has a ruler on the front edge of this plate here, so I'm actually going to use that to do my measurements. That'll keep me going straight. In theory, that'll keep me going straight. This is six inch pipe, by the way, which was too big for my chop saw, but I am gonna cut the three inch PVC on the chop saw. My three inch ring and my one and a half inch ring I cut in half. That'll make sense in a second.
I need to find my broom handle. So I'm gonna set up my three inch form like this. But I want to inset the pipe in the sides here. So I'm actually gonna do a little rabbit here to accept the pipe. Instead of ripping down a three inch board, I'm gonna just stack to one and a half inchers that I've already got cut. The inside spaces of the forms are gonna go together like this. Got two rabbits on this side and the three inch PVC fits in just like that. Then my outer edges go in like this. I'm not leaving myself a whole lot of thickness here to work with. However, I do know that the Aircrete is an excellent insulator. So as long as I can get this to be stable with the armature inside the Aircrete, I think this should hold up pretty well. So I'm guessing you have a pretty good sense where I'm going with these forms, so it's time for a montage. I'm gonna put these together with a combination of screws and hot glue. I'm a little concerned I'm not leaving myself enough thickness here. <laughs> but I'll put armature in there and, and give this ample time to cure. And hopefully this will be enough thickness to be stable. This is an experimentation channel, if you haven't already figured that out. My process is fairly intuitive. Um, and I show you my mistakes as well as my successes. So join me in the journey. Thank you. 
I've got this riser spacer cut in half because to get this form out inside this area, it's fragile. I've got it set up like this so I can just disassemble it as I take it out. I'm also going to wrap some cardboard around this to, to make it even easier. I'm gonna go with some WD-40 for my form release this go round. Definitely not as eco-friendly as the organic cooking spray, but it will get the job done. I cut a bunch of curly cues off a welcome sign to simplify it and actually save those. These will be perfect pieces of metal for my armature. Some salvage wire from a chafing dish as well. That will round it out. I'm going to band these PVC circles that are inside diameters with a strip of cardboard. That's gonna make it much easier to get this out. Got this pre-cut with a piece of duct tape there. Also check this circumference on an extra piece of pipe. So it should just wrap in and tape closed. I'm gonna do the same thing on my riser sections. I had a comment in my last video that noted that once the Portland gets chunky, in other words, it starts to clump up, that it's no longer good to work with, at least for this type of application. So I'm starting off here with a fresh bag of Portland cement. So many of the recipes I've seen for aircrete involve using weights. Because I tend to work in smaller quantities, I've not been able to get good weights on my foam. So I'm going to be working with volumes. When I'm mixing up my aircrete, I tend to look for a specific consistency. Not necessarily volumes, but I would like to know exactly or close to exact the amounts that I need to mix together. There's so many factors though, like with the thickness, of the cement and the density of the foam it's just aside from being a scientist it's hard to know exactly what to do here so i feel like the best option for me and i think for many of you would be to, to look for a consistency which to me is a thick cake batter but i'm going to try to go with a one part cement to three parts foam i'm going to see if i can't quantify that by marking the sides of the bucket as i mix it up the dregs of the last bag of Portland that I used when I screened out the powder, this is what was left behind. So definitely not what you should be seeing in a bag of Portland cement. This powdery consistency, that's more like it. Now I'll mix this into a slurry. Okay, I will say this mixture looks a lot more smooth than I've dealt with in the past. So, thanks for the tip on the fresh bag. Now I'm gonna make the foam. All right, I've got the air hooked up to Franken foam, and I've got this first valve open. My goal is to do this design with just the ball valve. So I'm gonna open up the cap here and put in my mixture of one ounce of seventh generation dish soap, which has glycerin, 
and 16 ounces of water. And then give this a gentle stir. The goal here is to not make suds, to disperse the soap throughout the water. The amount of space in the tank area here of Franken foam is just right for about 17 ounces of liquid. Put the cap back on. And I do have some Teflon tape in these threads to prevent air leakage. I'm gonna prime the generator by letting the more liquid part of the foam out into this small bucket here. And once I'm generating the thick stuff, I'm gonna move it to the big bucket. I'll be going up to about that point on the side of the bucket. Good stuff. And I gotta say, Franken foam has risen to the challenge. I am happy with this design as it is, so I'll be drafting that into plans and providing a parts list as well in my next video. Stay tuned. And now I'm going to mix the slurry and the foam together. And I want to set this to be going in the direction so that the, the slurry is getting lifted up into the foam. All right, I'm actually happy with this texture. It's a little bit different than I'm used to, but I think that's partially because I was working with some fresh Portland. So I'm gonna give this a shot. Once I've got the form filled, and smoothed out, I'm gonna cover it with a piece of plastic.
I find that covering these with plastic will protect this very top layer of the aircrete and keep those bubbles from popping. That top layer, it breaks down and you get a thin layer of brittle aircrete on the top. So when I did the aircrete forge, I did plastic over it and that layer did not happen. So covering with plastic is the way to go. Yeah, so I came inside, took a shower, got cleaned up, offloaded my footage, and sat down to edit, and lo and behold, no closing. I think I turned the camera off when I thought it was turning it on. So this is my edit setup, and here's the closing. The last thing I needed to do was to cover the risers with plastic, and I did that. I'm also going to let that air creep cure for a full 28 days. I'll go in in a couple days, take the plastic off, and then begin sort of misting it about twice a week. The, the moisture will help the concrete or the cement cure harder. Special thanks to my patrons and members for making these videos possible. I really appreciate your support and extra vote of confidence. The really amazing part about the closing that I wasn't actually recording is that the train arrived right there at the end. A perfect closing to any of my videos is having the train show up. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. Keep all the great comments, suggestions, and ideas coming. And you know me, I'm not afraid of a little constructive criticism. That's all I've got for you today. I'll see you next Saturday.